So yeah, we I gave you way too much homework last night. I was looking through, I got an email from somebody in third period who was like, my God, Evans, do you really, he just joined the class like three days ago and was like, do you really give that much homework every night? And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And then I went and looked and saw how long you guys were taking to finish that quiz. And some of you were like an hour, hour and a half. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I normally do not do that. That's just a nasty section anyways. Plus I just gave a regular assignment. So my bad, it won't normally be like that. There's a couple nasty sections, which there's no two ways about it. You just get kind of screwed over on those. But um, today's lesson, lesson should be much better, much faster. Your homework should go much quicker. I had every single person done with the lesson and out of the Google Meet with 20 minutes to spare. Okay, so just it was, go ahead. It wasn't that much homework last night. Yeah, I didn't you know, feel like it was. For the, those of you that totally got it, it's no problem. You just kind of breeze through if you struggled with that concept a little bit. Those are the people that were taking like an hour for the quiz. And then they were also doing the homework on top. So my goal is like half hour to an hour max. Um, and we're going to give a lot of quizzes. That's just the way it goes. Okay. So graphing absolute value functions, we're going to graph them. And then we're going to do what's called translations. So all that means is absolute value function is in the shape of a V. And you're going to learn how to move it up, down, left, and right. <clears throat> Actually, that was backwards, but you know what I mean. Um, so we're going to look at the graphing calculator for some of these functions, just so you can see what they look like. So the regular old, does any, hey, raise your hand if anyone has a graphing calculator, just so I know that. I have, my brother does. I, I don't have one, though. They look like this. Or like that behind me, you can see over here. Um, actually, this is, I had this kid last year, a really good artist, who uh, decorated my calculator cover. Check that thing out. Pretty amazing, right, for a picture? I was like, holy crap, that was amazing. Um, so we're going to look at absolute value of x. So I, nobody has a graphic calculator, so I won't explain too much. That's what the graph looks like. This is what's called the parent function. Okay, so it's like the function before anything happens. Um, and then we're going to adjust that function. So if you look at our screen here, they wanted to do absolute value of x minus 2. So what I want you to really realize in this is that the minus 2 is outside of the absolute value bars. Okay, so the things surrounding the x are absolute value bars. The minus 2 is outside. When you have a number outside, it either moves up if it's plus or down if it's minus. Okay, so when the number's outside of the absolute value, if it's plus, the function moves up. If it's minus, the function moves down. So we're going to move it down to, I'm going to leave the parent function. It'll always be right here in black. Also, I want you to realize, because you're going to have to graph these in your homework, this goes up one, right one, up one, right one, up one, right one, and up one, left one on the left side. Okay, so the slope's either positive one or negative one. And that's always going to be the case in algebra one. If I have you in algebra two, we do all sorts of crap to these functions. We'll make them skinny and fat and move them in every conceivable way. And we'll also do it with square root functions and lots of different kinds of functions. Okay, so we're going to do absolute value of x minus 2 and check out that graph. And you'll see all it does is move the graph down 2. Okay, so when you graph, I don't care if you show me the parent function or not when you graph these things. Sometimes it's helpful because you get the visual of what happens. But you should see these parallel lines here. Right? If you're moving it up or down, you should always have parallel lines. So if you don't, and you draw the parent function and the translation, 
then it's your clue that you did something wrong. So that's absolute value of x and absolute value of x minus 2. Minus 2 makes a function go down 2. You may see in the solutions, it'll say vertical translation. So vertical is up and down. Translation means it moves. And then they'll say up or down, whatever the number is. All I care about for this graph right here, you would just say down two. Okay. I don't care if you say the vertical translation part. If you want to be all fancy and say that, more power to you. Next graph. Oh, I forgot. One more thing I need to talk about. Um, definition of absolute value. Does anyone know? What the heck does absolute value mean? Like if I ask you what the absolute value of negative 2 is, does anyone know? Show me with your fingers if you do. Absolute value of negative 2. I see lots of correct answers out there. So absolute value of negative 2 is 2, as many of you said. Good job. So if we talk about the definition of absolute value, I'm just abbreviating. Uh, we're going to talk about two different things. One, distance from zero. So we'll talk about that real quick. So if I just have a number line, I got zero here, negative one, negative two. How far is negative 2 away from 0? 2, right? Not negative 2, 2. So negative 2 is 2 away from 0, okay? So if I say what's the absolute value of positive 2, what's that? Still 2, right? Still 2, good. So the second little point I would add to the definition, you'll never see this in a textbook, but I like to kind of rewrite textbook definitions so that you guys have an easier time understanding. Um, so distance from zero and always positive. Okay. So if you get the, those two things down, and even if you just remember the always positive, you're going to be in good shape with the absolute value. All right, moving on. So we have absolute value of x plus 2. We just did minus 2. I want you to try to graph this on your own paper. See if you can get it right. I'll give you like 10 seconds. So just quick graph, make it go up or down, whatever you think is correct. There's a glare. Oh, yeah? I'll show you what it is, yeah. Let me see if this helps. That makes it worse, huh? I'll just move the thing a little bit. It says this, I'll write it. Yeah, there you go. That's better. So y equals absolute value of x plus 2. Graph it. And thank you for telling me there's a glare. I just ordered a really long cable because the way my room's set up, where I connect to this whole system is like 20 feet that way. So I just ordered a really long cable. So hopefully I can start sharing my screen and then it'll be perfect picture so you'll be able to see it much better. All right, so if we have absolute value of x, there we go, plus 2, I'm going to draw in the parent function, so the one before you mess with it. Right, so this line is just cutting quadrant 1 in half. And this line is cutting quadrant two and a half. OK. 
Okay, and then if I move it up to, all it does, this is the vertex here. The vertex is where the function changes from decreasing to increasing. So anytime it changes direction, that's a vertex. You can have more than one vertex as well, just so you know. And then this just moves up too. And again, you're looking for those nice parallel lines. And voila. Okay, so absolute value of x plus 2 moves it up 2. So pretty easy, right? So if the number is outside after the absolute value bars, then it goes up or down. And it makes sense. Plus 2 just moves the whole function up 2. Minus 2 makes it go down 2. Now we're going to move on to, actually, no, we're going to go the other way first. So take a sec, graph this one. It's y equals absolute value of x minus 7. So take a sec and graph that one. I'm going to graph the parent function. Oops, my line tool. So show me with your like thumbs up, thumbs down, where it moves. Good, good, nice. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And again, just keep that up one, right one slope. And you're good. Incredibly easy, right? This one, all I need you to say, if we're describing the translation, sometimes they'll say graph it. That's what we did here. If they just they say describe it as well, all you have to say is down seven. Okay. Next one. Anyone need more time? Okay. All right, so now what I want to do, back to the graphing calculator. Instead of having the number outside of the absolute value bar, we're going to put it inside of the absolute value bars. So we'll say plus 2. Where do you think this is going to move? So I'll tell you it goes left or right. But well, which way, left or right? Okay, let's see. So plus two, let me tell you, when it's inside of the absolute value bars, it always does kind of opposite of what you think. It always does weird stuff. <clears throat> so let's graph this. So parent function will be graphed first. And then, there you see, it moved left two, okay? It's because of the nature of absolute value, right? Left two. So when it's plus inside of the bars, it goes left. That's a great thing to write down. When it's plus inside of the bars, it goes left. And we'll do a kind of a summary slide at the end here. So you can have all these transformations in one spot. But just write it along the way as well, because the more times you write it, the more you're likely to remember. So if we go back to our screen here, and if we have... What did I do? Let's see value of x plus 2. Just going to graph it on here real quick as well. Parent function. And then I'm going to do it in blue. Oop, forgot my line tool. 
again, maintaining those parallel lines still, even though we're moving left and right, you're still going to have those nice parallel lines, okay? That's really hard to see, isn't it? The blue, nod your head yes, or is it good? It's okay? All right, cool. I'm looking at the little video screen. Yeah, I guess you can kind of see it. Okay, cool. Um, so if it's plus a number inside of the absolute value, it goes left. Goes left, whatever that number is. And if it's minus inside the absolute value bars, it goes right, whatever the number is. Okay? So we'll do, as I said at the end, a numeric slide with like numbers in here with every transformation we're going to talk about. So we're talking about up, down, left, right, and we're going to take that V and flip it upside down as well towards the end. Okay, so now we want to write an equation for each translation of the parent function, y equals absolute value of x, right? Remember, y equals absolute value of x is always a v. So if we move it up three, try to write down what it is, but we want the function, so where's the three go? Is it inside here or outside? Unmute your mic. Tell me, inside or outside? I see. Outside. Yeah. Is that Cole? Cole's like trying to do some weird little signs over there. I, I got what you meant, Cole. It's all good. Doesn't mean I won't make fun of you. Just know that. Are you a delicate little snowflake, Cole? He couldn't hear me. That's good. Okay, so up three, just plus three. If we go down one, we just have absolute value of x minus one. So we're going to go from the equation to the graph, and then they're going to give you translations, like the verbiage for translations, and you have to write the equation. Okay, so on your quiz, you're going to have like, absolute value of x plus 3 on the outside, and then you're just going to pick the graphs, and then they'll talk to you about, like, if you go down one, what does the graph look like? So both ways on the problems. Absolute value of x plus 5. We're going to graph next. So when the plus 5 is in the absolute value bars, that's when it does weird stuff, okay? And I would literally, if I were taking notes in my own class, I would write, all right, all right, I'll have it recorded. Um, plus 5, you got to know what it does. So we're going to graph the parent function. All right, and then I want to do the parent function in white. So plus five, where's it go? Show me with your left or right. It goes left five. It's funny because you guys are backwards for me. So it's very confusing when I'm looking at which way you're pointing. I'll try, let's see if green works. Can you see that? Jay, what's your question? Um, so like when you're um when we're like graphing and stuff, you know how like you write the first line like the first lines, is it always gonna be like or meeting at zero, like in the middle? Yes. So the parent okay. function, the vertex always starts at the origin or zero zero. 
Okay. And this is just basically telling you where the vertex moves. So if oh, it's okay. plus five inside, that vertex moves over one, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. here we'll do um, the last two problems on your homework. There's like three translations in the function. And I'll kind of show you how to do that at the end once we finish learning them all. We're almost done now. Okay, absolute value of x minus 5 inside. I have a side note question. Will we have a final? No. But will we have a test of everything that we've no. had? No. Uh, Just quizzes. That's all we're doing. Because the problem with the final is you guys can cheat. I mean, I realize you can cheat on quizzes too, but I hope with the frequency of the quizzes and you being smart young men and women that uh, you're going to realize you have to learn this stuff and you're going to work hard and try. And I can tell many of you have been by the work that you're turning in in your quiz work as well. Okay. So an absolute value of X minus five, which ways it go? You like the quizzes? Good. Do the right five, right? So we're going to draw on the parent function again. Yeah, I too like the quizzes. I just started doing them last year. You know, read some stuff, went some to some professional development. And the immediacy of learning the quiz kind of forces you guys to learn it well in the moment. And I'm hoping that it will get into your long-term memory better than in previous years. So this one is going to go right five. So we're going to move over one, two, three, four, five. Draw in the graph. Right five, there you go. Any other football players out here? No other? I think I only have one football player. Huh, Broomfield, very exciting rival game this, this Friday at home. Our home games are at Centaurus. Unfortunately, you guys can't really go. I think this varsity players can get two parents. And kids that aren't on varsity can only get one parent. And then I think there's only 100 people overall that can go. Hopefully they'll stream it somewhere so you guys can watch it. It's just really fun going to those games. I hope next year you'll be able to do that. Okay, so here's what I was talking about. Oh, I want to talk about one more of these, though. That's fine. Let's actually let's just start writing this down. So start writing these down, absolute value of x plus two, and we're gonna say what all these translations are. So the plus two's on the outside, minus one's on the outside, plus three inside, minus four inside, and then the negative in front. That's what takes that v and turns it upside down. I'll give you a chance to write that down before I start doing it. Oh, and I tried to, uh, well, I recorded the video yesterday and talked about how it would be great if you could go back and watch the video. Went to process the video. The video was 48 minutes, and then it only processed seven minutes of the video, which is basically what you didn't need. And it... Like, you can't recover it once it processes. It's just over at that point. I have to use this other funky video platform called Wii Video, so they don't see your pictures on the screen. It's just kind of annoying. But, yeah, so you don't – there's no real good video from yesterday. Just first seven minutes of class is all. All right, what's this top one do? Somebody unmute and tell me. Up, down, left, or right. Or you could do, like, 
Up. And then how many? Go for it, Dawson. Up two. Up two. Excellent. Do you know them all, Dawson? Go for it. Down one. Okay, give me a sec just to write them. Down one. Next. Left three. Left three. Right four. Right four. Okay, you yeah, guys. I'm not know. pretty sure about the last yeah. one. I haven't taught you yet, so you couldn't. Right? So once you get those down, I'll show you on the graphing calculator what happens with this negative absolute value of x. It's nice to get the visual off the graphing calculator because then you guys tend to believe me. That's not right, Cole. Looks like, are we good? I want to go to the graphing calculator. Looks like we're good. So I'm just going to fix this graph. Right, so I just put in negative absolute value of x. And there's the parent function coming in. So if you put a negative in front, it takes all the answers and makes them all negative. So it just flips it over upside down. And what we say in math is it's called a reflection. Like you put a mirror here, right? And then you can see if you look from the top, you can see the bottom graph. It's a reflection over the x-axis. So this V just goes boom and flips over the x-axis. So reflection over x-axis. Okay, don't say flip. Use that word reflection. It's a more mathematical term. And again, like I've made the point. All right, see, all right. Like I made the point. Um, Knowing these math terms is super important because you've got to take SAT. You've got to know the math terms because it's so math vocab laden, the SAT. You don't have all these terms down, then you don't even know what to do in the problem, and it makes it super hard. Okay. I don't want to do that. All right. I want to show you an example of what the, uh, a nasty problem would be like 35 and 37 in your homework. So let's say we have y equals negative x, absolute value of x, sorry, plus 2 minus 3. So you have three separate translations. So the way I think about these, just going to draw a coordinate plane over here. So it's like directions for the vertex. So the vertex goes left two and down three. So I start at zero, zero, and I go left, one, two, down, one, two, three. And then I look at the negative in front here, and that tells me just it's upside down. Same slope, down one, right one, down one, left one, right? So left two, down three, and then I can just draw it in the rest of the V. That's it. So if I tell you, I want you to name what the vertical, what the translations are, we have both vertical up and down and horizontal translations on this one, as well as reflection. So I always prefer if you write them in order, so that negative in front is reflection x-axis, second one, left two, 
third one. Down three. Okay, I just want to quiz you after you're done writing that down on a few of these, just to make sure you get it. Looks like people are done writing. I'll just go at the bottom here in case you need a little more time. Oops. So absolute value bars just kind of extend a little above and below the X. I kind of make it bigger. You can see it better when it's printed on a computer. They'll be the exact same size as the numbers, but you'll be able to tell whether it's absolute value or the parentheses. So where's this go? Somebody unmute and tell me. Dawson's on it. I can see. Um, oh, Charlie, go for it. To the right three. Right three. What's that? Um, up two. Up two. So remember, when you're looking at two of them in one, inside the up two value bars, it does weird stuff. So instead of going left three, it goes right three. Outside of the up two value bars, it makes sense. It's plus two, it moves the V up two. Minus two, moves the V down two. That's it. Any questions? That's all I got. Your homework is right here. 7 through 27, every other odd. I never pay attention if it ends on 27 or not with the every other odds. So you do 7, skip 9, uh, do 11, skip 13, like that. And I show you on here that you probably can't see this too well, but I cross off every other odd so you know which ones to do because it's easy to screw that up. Um, so do the book work and the quiz. And as I said, most people finish with about 20 minutes to go. So most people finish the homework and the quiz in like 25 minutes. All right. Ask questions if you need. I'll set up the break rooms if anybody has individual kind of questions. I'm happy to help you with that. And again, sorry for abusing you on that homework last night. I, it'll happen periodically, but not very often.